gotta go back. And it's like all the way to the other room. We gotta well, do that. Yeah, life's Well, night. praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's good to see everyone this morning. We uh, uh, look forward to, you know, this is uh, Christmas season. Of course, afterwards we're having our uh, Christmas dinner. So don't everybody run out and jump in the car and go in the wrong direction. Got plenty of food to eat. And yeah, both, both. And uh, so, uh, that said, uh, last Sunday we didn't sing no Christmas songs. And I know that a lot of people, if they listen to the radio, they probably get wore out on them. Of course, even though they make new ones, but we're going to do a couple of the, the older ones in the old fashioned way. So y'all help sing. Um, Keep up with my wife. Maybe we'll do better on this. 
Hold that Bible up and you say it like you mean it. You mean it like you say it. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. And I can do what it says I can do. Today I'll be taught the Word of God. I boldly confess. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I'm about to receive the incorruptible. Indestructible, indestructible, ever living seed, ever living seed of the Word of God. The word of God. I'll, never be saying, I'll never be saying, never, 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 never. I'll never be saying, I'll never be saying, in Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I want you to be going in your Bible to Luke chapter 2, or Luke chapter 1, excuse me. And uh, of course, today's title of the message is Why Mary? Why did God choose Mary to be the mother of Jesus? And, and the thing is that uh, if you follow along on our Tuesday, Wednesday Bible studies, uh, I'll do a little in-depth teaching of each one. And of course, as I brought out Wednesday, uh, you had the four gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, each one views Jesus as different. Matthew portrays Jesus as the king. Mark portrays him as the servant. Uh, Luke portrays him, uh, portrays him as a savior. And John portrays him as the uh, son of God. And so they give a different perspective. Now, uh, if you read... Matthew chapter 1 and 2 versus Luke chapter 1 and 2. Matthew talks about more about Joseph than he does Mary. Luke, on the other hand, talks more about Mary than he does Joseph. And so that's why we're going to look at Mary first today. I thought I might do both of them, but then when I got to got to put everything on paper, I thought, oh, we'd be here at two o'clock, and everybody be uh, uh, wanting some lunch by then, and it would be on. So anyway, if you with me in Luke chapter one, uh, let's start with the twenty-sixth verse. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a, a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph, as a, of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. So, hallelujah. Father, we just want to thank you, Lord, that for this beautiful day. We thank you, Lord, for being so good to us. And Lord God, as we celebrate your birthday, and Lord, we know it probably in December 25th, and uh, it's probably later on in a different part of the year, but we just take this time to celebrate, and we're going to do it in word and, and try to just grasp how wonderful you really are, how you have everything planned, and there is no accidents. Everything is by design. And so, Lord, you just have your way with your people today to encourage, to strengthen, and just help them to just grasp how important uh, this time of season is. In the precious name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Now, as we read this, uh, uh, you know, we find that uh, Mary, a virgin girl, a spouse to a man, and, and to be a spouse means you was either uh, given to be the future husband or you was engaged to a future, your future husband. And uh, a lot of times it was that uh, uh, they, uh, were given to certain people. And of course, uh, with that said, she was probably in between the age of 13 and 15. By our time, that is relatively real young 
for somebody to be given to be married. And uh, yet, uh, one of the things is that the characteristics of today is uh, why would God have chosen Mary, a young girl? Why would he not have chosen someone that was older and probably more mature than she was, uh, especially when you look at the task that was at hand. And uh, God chose Mary for one of the most important acts of obedience that has ever been required by anyone. I mean, he was putting something on Mary that she couldn't explain <clears throat> and it wasn't reasonable, it wasn't rational. And going back, you know, I told you about Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, how they wrote their, <coughs> their books to look at Jesus in a different perspective. How many knows what Mark or what Luke's profession was? <coughs> Anybody got an idea? Luke was a physician. He was a medical doctor of that day and time. So he knew this wasn't something that is ordinary. Matter of fact, <coughs> he had to have some facts. So he had to, to talk to. You see, this is one of the things that a lot of times people that uh, they feel that they don't have the ability they don't have the experience, they don't have the education, and it makes them unqualified to do the service for God. And you know, if you go back into Psalms and look at what the psalmist wrote about uh, the Hebrews when God was leading them out of the promised land or out of uh, the land of bondage, out of Egypt to the promised land, one of the things that uh, the psalmist wrote was, why did you limit God? You see, you can limit God by your attitude. You limit God by the way you think, by what you do. Mary was no different than anyone else, even to this day. Because none of us deserves to be used by God. Yet, God looks at us and sees us different than we usually see ourselves or anybody else sees us. Uh, in verse 28 through 30, And the angel came in unto her and said, Hell, thou that art highly favored, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. Wow. Now you know we all like her because there's things God may have spoken to us to do and we cast in our in our mind ain't no way that I can do this. And she's thinking how is it you are talking to me like this? How am I, how am I blessed and highly favored? I'm just a young teenage girl engaged. She wasn't no wealthy person. Don't know nothing about her family. All we know is a, a little bit about Joseph. Let me tell you something. 
God's favor doesn't automatically bring success or fame. Contrary to a lot of false preaching, I mean, we can do what God's Word says. If we sow, then we shall reap. If we give, it shall be given unto us. Good measure, pressed down, shaken gifts, shall men give unto us. All those things, yeah. But here God was, or the angel was telling Mary, you're highly favored. You are blessed among women. And she's trying to figure out, where in the world is this coming from? You ever had anybody say something to you that just sort of, as the old saying goes, just blowed your socks off? Because you couldn't figure out, how in the world, what, what in the world are they talking about? And, and then the angel said, fear not. Because usually when... You get something that's above your head, above your thinking, above your ability, above your experience. Sometimes fear will pop up and you think, in no way I can do this. I don't know what they get, what's going on, but ain't God be talking to somebody else. And he said, Thou hast found favor with God. No one had more favor than Mary. And his blessing on her was going to be the birth of the Messiah. Now you want to know how it is to be highly favored with God? I'm going to give you three things. Number one, her peers would really ridicule her. They'd make fun of her. Number two, her fiancé would come very, very close to dumping her. We may get into that next Sunday about Joseph because it said he had thought about privately putting her away because she was pregnant and it wouldn't hurt his son. The third thing was she was going to see her son rejected and murdered. Now to us, that don't sound like highly favored, does it? So why did God choose Mary? Why did God choose a young, teenage, non-sexual, young girl to be the mother of the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, <coughs> the Messiah, Emmanuel, Let's see. Verse 31. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shalt call his name Jesus. He shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest and the Lord God shall get unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over, the, reign over the house of Jacob forever in his kingdom. There shall be no end. Then Mary said unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? Oh, Lord, she saith. I'm not, I've never had sex. I am innocent. And you saying I'm going to have a baby? 
Now that's a mind blower. That is a mind blower. It don't happen. And yet, as God was telling her what was going to happen, even gave her his name, Jesus. Now, how many knows what the Hebrew word for Jesus is? It is the Hebrew name is Yeshua or Joshua. It was a very common name. And it means the Lord is salvation. Yet this was going to be the one that had been prophesied by Isaiah, prophesied in Psalms. And as Gabriel was giving her this information, God's plan required her to submit to his plan. Now, how many know how, how hard is it to get people to submit to obeying the Bible? There's ministers all around the world preaching today. And they may talk about obeying the word of God. And it goes in one ear and out the other. Because people don't change something. And yet here, God was challenging a young 13 or 15 year old non a virgin to do something that nobody else had ever been asked or required to. If we was to ask today, how many young girls would stay true? Or put it like this, stay a virgin till they got married. Now there is some that does. Praise God for them that does. Then they then after they get older in years, they look back and say, you know, I'm glad that I kept faithful to God. Mary was faithful. She was obedient. And as Gabriel was giving her the information of what was getting ready to take place, who would have blamed her for asking them how the impossible is going to happen? He say, that's what she's doing. How shall this be? Seeing I know not a man. Now I want to, and, and that's why when I talk about Jesus, who was it led the people into the promised land? Joshua. Who is it going to come back and take us into eternity? Yeshua, Joshua, Jesus. The name's the same, just different Greek versus Hebrew. And that's why we wonder. Because back then, they was probably... Hey, Yeshua, hey, Joshua, come here. And, of course, we, if you speak Spanish, it's Jesus. That is what you'd mention, Jesus. I know that every once in a while, if, I'm, if I come around somebody that don't speak, I'll say, Jesus Christos, to see if they know Jesus Christ. And sometimes, oh, no, or sometimes, oh, yeah, yeah. Huh? So I'm having to try to learn a little Spanish as it goes since I'm working with more and more of them. Sometimes I just sit there and laugh at them, listen to them. I keep telling them, I said, y'all talk like Chinese. Y'all talk so fast. I bet y'all go in China and they would understand every word you say. <laughs> Amen. That's why, you know, 
when I, I first said, how many of y'all knew what Luke's uh, work was, what he was, and that's why he's a, a physician or a medical doctor. And that's why he well knew that babies takes two to make a baby. And for him to believe in the virgin birth was just as hard as it is for us. So he had to have facts. That's why whenever he was part of the ministry of Jesus Christ, he got firsthand knowledge from Mary of what happened, how it happened. What she said, because Mary, this was one point in her life that she would never, ever forget. How many's had certain events in your life that may have been 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, maybe even 60 years ago that you still remember as if though it had just happened yesterday? There's a lot of things I have. I remember things back to my childhood when I was four or five years old. And these did not leave. So Luke was painstaking in researching how everything come about to this. That's why the first two chapters of Luke records the events of Mary's relatives, Elizabeth, Zacharias, the birth of Jesus. And as a Christian, we should have no doubt that God has power to create a child in a virgin's womb. He took dust and made man. He breathed into Adam's nostrils and he became a living spirit. Now let's go to verses 35 to 38. And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the high shall overshadow thee. Now, you talking about talking in foreign language? That's like saying, Mary, you're going to get on an F-14 and fly over across. She never, there wasn't no planes back then. She never heard nothing like it. They didn't know nothing about the Holy Ghost. And here this angel's telling her something that was beyond her comprehension. And the power of the highest, you know, it's capital, so that means the angel's talking about God, shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called what? the Son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month with her, who was called barren. For with God, nothing is impossible. And Mary said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed. John the Baptist was six months older than Jesus. John went to preach in the wilderness about the Messiah coming. They were related. Elizabeth, she was old. I mean old. 
And her husband was old. And they hadn't had no children. <laughs> and God blessed her with getting pregnant. And Zacharias, him being a priest, a godly man, had doubts. You read this in, in, in the chapter. And because he had doubts, God zipped his lip till after John was born. And after John was born, everybody said, well, y'all the name in this or y'all the name in that. And finally, Zachariah said, nope, John is his name. And they were amazed. Why? With God, nothing's impossible. God took some two people that were married, that were way past having children, and they had a son named John. So how hard is it for God to say, Mary, you're going to have my son? Can you imagine if that had been you and an angel came and said, his, his name is going to be Jesus and shall be born of thee, shall be called the Son of God? That and Mary, just a teenage girl, Put your place, you ladies, put your place in her situation. And then on top of it, she's got to tell her fiance. Hey, Joseph, honey, I'm pregnant. It's not your baby. Well, who's this? Deep. God's. You lying me. Oh, I'm not an angel came and visited me. Ain't no angel come and visit you. If you're pregnant and it's not by me, then you are lying. And by the old Levitical law, they were supposed to take women that or young ladies that had committed sexual fortification and stoned them to death. That's why Joseph was going to put her away privately so that nobody would know why he did. You see, this young lady was so mature at her young and innocent age. A lady of this character are far and few between in this day and time. No doubt, no doubt back then too. And uh, that's why Jesus had to come to earth so he could make a way for us to have eternal life. Not only that, but our sins forgiven. And just as God took a young girl that wasn't noticeable, wasn't anyone special, just an average young lady, and chose her to be the mother of the creator of heaven and earth. See, Jesus was in the beginning, and all things were created by him, for him. And here Jesus was going to be born. He's leaving heaven and going to be born and married as a baby. Ah. This was also going to be the suffering lamb of God to pay a debt that he didn't know. She questioned, she asked questions because of trying to understand. 
and finished with it, be it according to thy word. How many people do you know is just content with a simple answer to a very difficult job? Man, if we could just be that obedient to the Word of God, hear it, read it, and obey it. That says, wouldn't it be nice if we could learn to do that? I wonder how many thousands of girls that God could have chosen, yet he picked Mary. Do you realize that God may use you and it isn't because of your qualifications. It is your obedience that makes the difference with God. Obedience is better than sacrifice. See, let today be the day that you become obedient to God so that God can use you beyond your dreams. For some, it may be godly parents or the best owners or the best supervisors or, or the best leaders or the best to show of care and compassion to hurting people. You may never make the headline news or the front page. What matters is when you make yourself available to God. What matters in your past, but it's what you're going to do today. What you do today sets forward in motion your future tomorrow. And that's why don't let your past. Mary apparently had a clean past. You know, that's the amazing thing. God takes nobodies and makes somebodies. The difference between, as I said, Matthew spoke more about Joseph because Joseph was of the lineage of the king of David. And in the first chapter of Matthew, he relates to women that were not of best character or had the best heritage. Matter of fact, you'll find that Rahab, who was listed as a harlot, was in the line of, of Jesus. You'll find that Bathsheba, who committed adultery with David, her son Solomon was in the lineage of Jesus. You'll find Tamar, who committed sexual sin with her father-in-law is in the lineage of the king of David, which is in the lineage of Jesus. You'll find Ruth, who was a Moabite. They weren't God's people. They were heathens. And you find her in the lineage of King David and of Jesus. And if we looked at it, they said, well, won't happen here. <clears throat> Yet God says, with me, there's nothing impossible. You see, that's the thing about God. God picks and chooses. All he requires of us is obedience. You can't make you can't make God do nothing contrary to his word. But I can tell you one thing. When you obey his word and say, Lord, your word says this. And God said, yeah, it says that. And if you're doing what he says, God says, yeah, God had him. See, that's what I like, like about old, uh, 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 now mine's just went blank. Uh, Isaiah, he was, he went to the king and, and, uh, and told him, said, uh, Lord said for you, get your house in order, 
because you get ready to die. And the king rolled over in his bed, face the wall, and started saying, Father, or Lord God, haven't I done what you asked me to do? Haven't I kept your word? And before, before Isaiah got all the way back across the city, God says, you go back there and tell the king that I'm going to give him 15 more years. Obedience. And that's one thing Mary had going for her. She was a, a obedient young lady. She didn't try to say, well, you talking to the wrong person, Angel. You need to give a talk to somebody else. She just said, I don't understand. I don't see, I don't understand how I'm highly faithful. And there at the end, she said, okay. Okay, this is going to be a God thing. Be it unto me according to thy word. She said, if it's going to happen, it's going to happen, and I'm just going to do things God's way. And guess what? She did. And Jesus was born. And Jesus came and made a way for me and you to have Amen. eternal life. He came as a baby. He gave up his heavenly throne the creator of all creation gave up his heavenly throne. Come down here so that me and you could have eternal life with him in heaven. And that's why we ought to be celebrating his birthday. Because if he had never come, guess what? We wouldn't have much a chance of being able to have eternal life. But because of him, we do. So I'm going to stop there today. As I said, you can follow along this week. We've got two more Sundays. The third Sunday will be the 25th. And on the 25th, we will be having a 10 o'clock service. We will, uh, to celebrate the day that we have appointed to celebrate the birth of Christ. And so the doors will be open and uh, everybody's welcome to come. I know a lot of people, I know who it is when you've got families that you've got to go one day here and one day there. So we will... We will try to be very brief and just celebrate our Lord and Savior because he deserves it. <laughs> so with that said, how many has their life right with the Lord Jesus Christ today? Have you ever been born again, truly born again to the point that you know that you know that you know that you're no longer a sinner, but you're a child of the Most High God. You belong to the family of Jesus Christ. When you know that, then you know there's no devil will keep you out of heaven and you won't want to do the things of the world. So if you've never accepted Jesus Christ, or if you backslid, it's just as easy to get back right standing with God as it was the first time. So let's just pray this simple prayer. If you'll believe in your heart, confess with your mouth, it's unto salvation. So let's pray. Father God, I come to you in the name of the Lord Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, I believe you came down here to be born of the mother, virgin mother Mary. To live to pay my sin debt. That if I would believe on you, I'd have eternal life with you. So I accept what you've done. I ask you to forgive me. I accept that you paid my price. <coughs> 
Now I ask you to fill me with the Holy Spirit so that from this day forward, I can live for you. And I ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. Amen. So if you prayed that prayer, know that you know. Because you ought to know. You don't, if, if you're in the if land, or I might be, then you probably are. You got to know that you know that you are. I know that I know that I am, and you ought to know that you know that you are. That way, when Jesus comes for his church, we out of here. First flight. I don't want to stick around for the tribulation. So, God bless. Remember Tuesday and Wednesday night, 6.30 Bible study on YouTube. Later be uploaded on to Facebook. 6.30 on Facebook and to be later uploaded on YouTube. I get right, just got backward. Had a dyslexia moment. And look forward to seeing you then. May God bless you. Have a great rest of the weekend. Hallelujah.